welcome to another Space Invaders-like arcade game tutorial. It's great being able to shoot and destroy enemy ships, but let's be honest, if those ships can't actually do any damage to you, it doesn't make for much of a game. So, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to create a user interface and have lives subtracted each time an enemy collides with the player. Let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually get our user interface up and running. To do that, we're going to right-click over here in the hierarchy, go down to UI, and then select Image. Now at first you might not notice anything at all, or you might just have a little white square appear. That's because when you add a UI, you get this canvas, which when you double click on it, is this giant rectangle here, and your game itself shrinks down to this little tiny bit here. Essentially what you need to do is think of this canvas as the screen you'll be playing your game on. So if I put my game view, and scene view side by side. You can see that if I move that image around on the canvas, it also moves in my screen. This image is actually going to be one of my lives and I'm gonna put those in the top corner, so I'll just move it up here for now. Now over in our inspector, you'll notice that there is under image, a source image slot. And what we're gonna do there is simply get a copy of our player ship. And I'm gonna call this life one. I'm just going to use Command D to make a couple more copies. It's up to you how many of these you want to make. I'm going to have three lives as the max in my game. At this point, we can use our Move tool to slide these over a little bit. And we've got a slick looking UI already set up. At this point, I just want to add some text here just saying Lives. So I'm going to right click on Canvas, head down to UI again. And I'm going to use Text Text Mesh Pro. Now, if this is your first time using TextMesh Pro, you will see a pop-up here asking you to import the TMP essentials. You do need those in order for this to work. The extras is not something you have to have, but you can download it if you want to look around. This one, I'm just going to move my text up top here. And before I do anything with my text, I'm actually going to click on the canvas for a second. In your canvas, if you go to your canvas scaler, you will notice that our UI scale mode is currently at constant pixel size. This just means that regardless of the resolution of screen you're playing your game on, you'll always use the same number of pixels. The problem with that is that then on a higher resolution screen, your text will shrink and it will grow on lower res. If you instead click scale with screen size, it will automatically scale to fit whatever screen you're working. The other thing you're gonna need to do though is change your reference resolution. Right now I'm working with 1920 by 1080. So I wanna make sure that those are the numbers down here so that I get the right reference. All right, now with my text clicked on, I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna call this lives as that's what the text will say. To change the text, we need to head down here to the Text Mesh Pro component. Here's where I'll write lives with a colon. And then much like in any word processor, you have all sorts of options to customize your text. You can bold, italicize, or underline, change the size and color, and that sort of thing. All right, now that we've got our UI set up, we're ready to do some coding. Now, while we could put this piece of code into our player controller, I like to keep this one separate just to keep things simple so you're not ending up with one monster code. So we're gonna create a brand new C-sharp script. And I'm just gonna call this one Player Lives. Before we write any actual code, I'm gonna click on my player ship. I'm just gonna add that component, Player Lives. There are four things we want to do from within our code here. The first is simply to detect when we've been hit by an enemy. We then want to take away a life. We want to make sure that if our lives get down to zero, our player is destroyed. And finally, we want to update our user interface each time we get hit. So let's get started. First of all, let's head down below update here. And we're going to create a on collision enter 2D function. And all this is going to do is detect any time we collide with an object that has a collider. And we want to just check to see if the collision game object has a tag that is equal to enemy. It's a good time to check inside of Unity that your ships are indeed tagged as enemy and that the tag matches what you've typed into your code. Now once we hit an enemy, we simply want to take away a life, but at this point we're not keeping track of our lives. So let's head up to the top here under our class where we can make a public integer called lives. I'm going to set mine to 3 for now, but you can choose a different number if you like. And when we hit an enemy, we simply want lives to minus equals 1. Now at this point we want to do a quick check to see if our lives are less than or equal to 0. We may later have an enemy who deals more than 1 damage, so that's why I put the less than. Don't, don't forget your equals. And if our lives do get to that point, we want to destroy 
our player's game object. Now the other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that when our enemies hit the player that they are destroyed. And we don't want to put that only when our lives get to zero. We want it to actually happen when they collide with us. So at this point, we're going to destroy the collision game object as well. Now back in Unity, you should see that you now have a lives box to keep track of your lives. And before we test this, this is a good time to make sure, if you haven't already done so, that you make your enemy ships into prefabs. You can do this simply by dragging those ships down into your assets menu. I've created a folder for prefabs. At that point, they'll turn blue. And all this means is that now, no matter how many ships you have, if you update the root object down here and apply the changes, it will apply to all of your ships so that you don't have to change every single ship each time. I'm just gonna quickly make a couple of extra copies of these ships so that my player can take his full three damage. Now at the moment, there's going to be two small problems that are going to happen. First of all, you'll notice that my player is getting knocked around. And second, he's not losing lives or destroying the enemies. Now these are easy fixes. First of all, for the getting knocked around, while well clicked on your player ship, if you just go into your rigid body, go down to constraints, we're gonna freeze the Z rotation, which will keep our player from rotating after he's been hit. The other problem is a coding problem, and that's just because our ships are not major game objects themselves, they're children of this larger ships one. And so what we need to do, since they, the ships are children of another object, right now when we collide, it's looking at the parent object. So we just want to check to see if object, And then we'll do the same thing down here. That will look at the specific collider that's hit the player rather than the parent object. Now when our player gets hit, you'll notice that he's taking damage and after three he dies and the enemies are also dying when they hit the player. Right, all we need to do now is update our user interface to match what's happening. To do this, we're going to head to the very top here and add a new using line. We're going to be using Unity Engine.UI. So now we're simply gonna make a reference to the images in our game and we'll call these ones lives UI. Now at this point, we could create an image one, image two, image three for as many lives as we have, but that's kind of annoying and it also creates a problem if we wanna add more lives later on. So instead, I'm gonna make this an array by adding square brackets. When you create an array, it will add this new line into your script, which is great because it's super customizable. So you can actually just take however many lives you have drag them onto that lives UI. And if you hit the arrow here, you'll notice now that life image is in there. And you can do this as many or as few times as you want, and it will just adjust to that number. At this point, what we want to do is check to see every time we take damage, we're going to check and see whether or not our lives are still at three or if they've changed, and then turn on or off those ships to match. So to do this, we're going to go down below where we take the lives damage. And we're going to do something new. This is going to be a for loop. And essentially what it's gonna do is create a loop that's gonna run over and over again. And it's gonna check each of our images to make sure whether or not they should be turned on. So what we're gonna do first of all is we're just gonna make a variable in here called i. It'll start at zero. And it's just gonna keep track of how many times it's gone through this loop. And what we essentially wanna do is, for as long as i is less than lives ui dot length, and then what we're gonna do is just after each loop, it's gonna add one to our integer. And all we want it to do is if i, but if it's less than the number of lives that we actually have, we simply want to take our lives UI, the one we're currently looking at, so we'll put an i in there. And if we have more lives than the number we're at, then we would simply wanna turn it on. So we'll do enabled equals true. Now, if that's not true, so we'll type an else statement here, and we have fewer lives than the life we're checking, then our lives UI I will be enabled to be false. And this time you'll notice that every time our player gets hit, the enemy is destroyed and a ship also disappears up top. Now I have another tutorial that shows how to instantiate in animations so that you can have explosions when you get hit, but just in case you want that bonus feature, we're gonna show how to do that quickly right now. So inside of this exact same script, we can come up to the top, create a public game object, and we'll call this one explosion prefab. And then all that we wanna do down here is just make sure that each time we 
hit the enemy, the enemy is destroyed, but we're also going to instantiate that explosion prefab at the player's position, transform.position, and we're going to add no special rotation, so we can just put quaternion.identity. In Unity, then, just don't forget that you need to drag your explosion prefab onto your player. And now, not only will your player take damage when he's hit, but he will look good doing it. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel. Till next time, this is Matt with Nightrunner Studio. Cheers. Thank you.